going in. Hello? What's up? What's that? Waiting your timeline. Don't get up, don't get up. Why? Oh, just every hour ago. What have you been doing? Working on your plane? Uh, yeah, I actually got a, I had a problem and it called me a little while ago and yelling at me for putting primer on the wings in the hangar, which I didn't want to happen. You put it on? Well, I didn't put it on. I had somebody put it on. I don't want any painting um, in there. So, how you doing? Cold out. I'm good, yeah. Well, what? Yeah, I got, that? I got my thing done for the time. And, and, um, what I basically put down was that the condo sign in any instance that happens. That you what? In any instant that instance that could happen, the condo is mine. Really? Like if he dies, it's wait, mine. wait. If Ted dies, then the condo is yours. Yeah. What do they call that? Writer survivorship. Yeah. But wait, does but, he have to agree to that? Well, he's already agreed to it because I already told him how it happened right now. Wow. If okay, if he dies before me, the condo is mine. <laughs> if I die before him. Which is not likely. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's pretty healthy. Well, but my I think, you, I think you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not funny. <laughs> that is not funny. Well, I'm trying not to make light of it, but... That's not funny. I don't do, do that. <laughs> what if you... But what if you no. get pissed off at him, would you... No, I could have killed him many times. And gotten away with it. Well, I'm but just... I could have... Anyway, I'm just saying this. If he ends up getting his nose pinched and a rag shoved down his, Anthony, that is mean. Well, that I'm not, <laughs> I know what happened. Anyway, if I die before he does, my half of the condo goes to my daughter. Okay. So that would be the only way that would be he would be involved in it at all. He, he remains half owner with if I die before him. Okay. Well. That's up, Which to you. Is only fair. That's up to you how you do that. I'm sorry I was making a joke about that, but I'm trying to make light of it because it's been weighing on my mind. I can't stop thinking about it. I had, it was hard to sleep last night, you know, because my mom died, you know, on June 8th. I kept thinking about it. You saying you had nightmares that your dad was at the foot of the bed? I mean, that's scary. But it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a nightmare. It was, he was talking to me and telling me it's okay. It's okay that you ended his life early? He doesn't I care? I don't know what he was meaning by it. He just was telling me it's, it's okay and you're okay. Do you hope in your dream? What is that? I don't know. I just turn on vibrate. Oh. Just leave it be. I'm trying to talk to you about my feelings. Okay, I'm trying to right now. Um, your feelings. Yeah. My feelings. How do you think they feel? Well, how do you feel? Well, I don't. I feel that. I told you this. I feel like I did what any nurse would do in a hospital in the instance where somebody was that ill and that close to death. What any nurse in the hospital would do? You think yes, they would give them the lethal dose of morphine. You think a registered... They gave my cousin. Wait, hold on, wait. You think, you're saying you would, you did what you think any nurse would do in a hospital? Yeah, because that's the standing order. Okay, but you said you stopped him from breathing. That's not a lethal morphine. Well, that's what morphine would do to you anyway, which is stop your breathing. But I just didn't have any morphine. If you had morphine, you would have used that? Well, it, it would have to be from hospice. And there was no hospice there. I know. That's why we were investigated. 
That's why you were investigated because no hospice was there? Yes. Why does that make sense? Because when hospice takes over, they can legally kill a person. I don't think so. Yes, I know so. I've been in this 30 years. I've seen it. I've done it. I know what You've it's done like. it. You've, you've, who did yes, you? Yes, you give a, you give a dose that is beyond the dose that they just had four hours ago that they're crying in pain. So the, the doctor's order is you up it by two milligrams, by two milligrams. But you up it by more than that. No. You get to a point where that next two milligrams is going to kill you. And you know that. But it's legal. That's what they uh, do. I don't even want to get into that. But listen, but you know how personal, I've been, th I had nightmares about this. Oh, Anthony, what can I do at this point in my life? I, but I'm just, I, I'm trying to I'm justify. I'm not a bad person. Be I don't feel I'm a bad person because I feel I did it because my father was suffering so bad, mentally and physically. He was in pain, he couldn't breathe. But yet he wanted a drink of vodka. Well, he had it every night before he went to bed, he had probably this much. But I, I keep thinking about the personal nature of you actually pinching his nose. I didn't pinch his nose. Who pinched his nose? She did, Mary. Mary Beth? Mm -hmm. But you put a washcloth in his mouth. Well, he had to stop the breathing somehow. Well, then I didn't want to put a pillow over his head. I mean, at that point, we, it was of no return. Do you understand? No, I don't. No return from where? I mean, what? Who, you determined the hour that he would stop breathing is what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and the kicker was my dad had a pacemaker. So I'm taking his pulse and his heart is beating, but he's dead. Because the pacemaker was making his heart beat. What do you mean that's the kicker? Do you think that was funny? No, it was terrible because I thought he was still alive because he had a pulse. And I wasn't thinking in my head, my father has a pacemaker. Even though you had shoved a rag in his mouth and he, you know he stopped breathing. Stop it. What do you mean stop it? What do you it? want me to go crazy? Are you trying to make me crazy? Are you crazy? No. Are you sane? Yes. Do you know right from wrong? Yes, I do. Do you feel it was right or wrong? I feel that I did put my father, I euthanized him. That's what I did. Just like hospice does. I'm sorry, I don't believe you the hospice does that. I know for a fact they do it. Well, you said you do, you've done it. I've done it, yes, in the hospital. Who did you? Her doctor's it, who, order. Who did you administer a fatal dose to? Oh, to do you know cancer patients? that I would take care of when I worked at Morton Plant? Name one person you can remember. I can't remember a name, but I can remember a face. You gotta remember at least a first name. Who do you remember suffering that was you were close to and you thought, this lady is so nice? When they are begging you. Just name somebody. To, they are begging you. All right, just to, think, to so, so them, you care so much. To give them morphine. You, to you care pain. so much, remember one and name. You there is a, you titrate the, the medication, mm -hmm. okay? I understand, but you care so much, name one name and face that you helped out of their misery in hospice. Well, I can remember a lady named Gloria with all this blonde gray hair. Gloria blonde. with blonde gray hair. You don't even remember her last name. How can I remember her last name? Gloria. And it was so long ago. How long ago? 10 years ago? 20 years ago? Probably 15. 15 years ago. That's not long enough. If I put somebody out of their misery with a fatal dose of morphine and I knew that I was the one who administered it, I remember her first. Do you know those nurses do that every single day of their life? I don't believe do? you. Check it out. What if I said I don't believe you about this story about stopping your, your, your dad's breathing? What if I just said I thought you're making it up to scare me or something, scare me from you? What? It happened. It happened. You're not just trying to scare me? Are you scared of me? Not really, but you do have a 38. Oh, come on. I have never would never shoot someone unless a stranger came through that door and when it came into my you, bedroom. And I knew they were not I'm not I I'm not scared know. of you, but you're the kind you're the kind you're so meek to think that you actually murdered your father. I did not murder him. Oh, I'm sorry. Euthanize? Yes. There's but, a difference. But, you, but Mary Beth was mad at him. She actually murdered him. I find her more to blame than you. True? 
Yes, they were arguing terribly. So she was happy. at each other. So she, but she, what she didn't understand is my father did not have his mind. So why would you scream at someone like that? So she was screaming, but she was so upset because, like you, you told me yesterday, she's got a mean streak in her. Yeah, you should have seen her one day when Shirley was very ill. Who's Shirley? Shirley is my dad's companion. Your dad's she companion. She died three weeks before him. Wow, who killed her? Nobody. She was... Yes, hospice killed her. Oh, hospice. Were you involved in that? <laughs> yes, I was at the end of the bed rubbing her legs. They were like balloons. And did you, did you say to the hospice, go ahead and give her more morphine? I condone that? No, because she was not my mother. I had no legal right to say anything. But I knew they were giving her the dose that night. So this is no... I had eye contact with that nurse. Yeah. And I knew they were going to call us. Three o'clock in the morning, they called us and told us she died. You knew because you made eye contact with I her. I made eye and contact. And what is it? An unspoken her? between nurses. This is time for the more morphine. It no. Did. Shirley was saying that she was in horrible pain, and I just looked over to the nurse. The nurse didn't know me from Adam. Didn't know what I did. Didn't know anything about me. And I just made eye contact with her, and she said, "I think you all should say your goodbyes for tonight to Shirley. Say goodbye to her." Say goodbye, and, and I think you guys need to go. Your family needs to go home now. I knew then they were. That was the night they were doing it, and they did it. What was that hospice nurse's name? I don't know. I have no idea. But it was over. How come you years. don't remember names of people that kill people or that you kill? I don't kill people. You just killed Gloria. You said you killed Gloria 15 years no, ago with a fatal didn't dose. Kill her. But you knew I that was the dose. The dose the doctor ordered, but it it made her stop breathing. And you knew it was going to happen. But they do it all the time, Anthony. But you knew it was going to happen. It's accepted. Yeah. I don't accept it. I'm glad you're not my family member. I mean, what if you? Here's the thing that's killing me. This is what's killing me. This is what I can't get over. You say you're you dead. You asked me to tell you. I didn't want to tell you. Yeah, no. You I didn't want you to come over yet. What you're You asked me. Yeah. The hell you didn't. I got it on text. So the, the thing is, you, what you said is you, you didn't tell me what you were going to tell me, but when you did, but when you did start talking and you said, I, this is what happened, this messed me up. This so this messed me up so much. You wanted me to understand why you're messed up. True. I don't think I'm messed up. But didn't you want me to understand why you're so messed up? That that's the thing that messed you up. You know what I thought you meant at first was that you were molested. I know. I could see it in your eyes. You thought I was going to say that. That's why I should have just not said anything. But you told me that you were going to tell me why you're so messed up, and you did. And I'm glad you told me because it makes sense. It makes sense to me. I can't see how you live with yourself. Did you look in the mirror after I left? Yes, I did. And what did you see? I saw myself. I just saw myself. I did not see a person that I felt did anything that was that I'm going to go to hell for. You're not going to hell? Nope. I don't think I am. Why? I just feel it. You feel it. I tried to pose a scenario to you yesterday. What if I see a bum on the street and I see he's real skinny and he's not eating? And I say, you know what? He only has about you a year did. left. You videoed him, remember? I did. Wow. I did video a bum at one point and put it on Facebook. But you know what I'm saying? Like, what if I say, I need his kidney? Let me just knock him over the head, cut his kidney out. He's only got about a year left. I'm just trying to ask you, how can you justify when someone takes their last breath? You, you told me that your father might live two to six more months. Isn't that valuable time? In horrible pain and what they were going to have to put him through, and he was mentally completely out of it and angry out of it. So you girls were scared that he was angry. It was going to get worse. Well, they were going to lock him in the lockdown. Lockdown? You told me he was getting ready to move into a beautiful apartment. He was, but it was in the lockdown part of it. Okay, but there was a plan. Um, he would be locked in his room right. at night, and he would be. He, there was an locked in his room at night because he would be dangerous for himself. He could wander out and walk on McMullen Booth Road and go get hit by a car. Get hit by a car, maybe. 
But now he doesn't have a chance to get hit by a car, McMullen Booth, walking out of his beautiful furnished apartment. He wasn't going to go into the apartment. He refused to go. He refused to leave the house. So he was being ornery, and you girls were kind of pissed off with his orneriness. No, it wasn't. I never had an argument with my father but in my Mary whole Beth life. Did, but Mary Beth did. She argued with him, and she listened to me. Because he took out his anger on her. I was his favorite, so he never, we never had words. Okay, but he took out his anger. But he took his anger out of my sister a lot. And she was chagrined about that. She was upset. She was upset about that, no? Yeah, I think she was upset, yes. They were screaming at each other. Don't you think when you suggested that you euthanize him, she was happy and said, yeah, fuck this, let's get him out of the way. He's an old bastard anyway. Be honest. I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to say? She's my sister. I want you to tell the truth. Who was... Maybe you were doing it... We talked about this last night after you left. Who did? Me and her. Talked about what? About dad. Why? She doesn't know you told me. No. Absolutely So what made you talk to your sister, Mary Beth, about your dad? She came into the room, and that's when she said about Ted. Okay. Okay. She said... about your dad? She was upset that Annie was so intent on... Annie, your daughter? Yeah, on Ted not coming here or, right. you know, screaming at me. Ted, your that. husband? Where's she it? forgot to tell Mary that they were taking my license away and that my side had gotten to the point where they were taking... That, that didn't matter to my daughter. All that mattered was Ted, and she was Ted. Your daughter hates Ted, and he's driving from North Carolina right now. Yes, he is. What town did you guys live in? I forgot. It was just between Asheville and Winston-Salem, right? In oh, Asheville's beautiful. I know. There's a lot of music going on up there. What town was it called? Not in Asheville. No, Asheville in North Carolina. It's beautiful. There's a lot of music. Biltmore House. What was yeah. it called? Biltmore House. No, the, house, the town you lived in. Well, we were actually right on the edge, one county from West Virginia. What was the town called? Well, our address was actually Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem. But Asheville's got a lot of big music scene. I know a lot of my friends that are up there. But anyway, he's driving down here. You've never told him about this. No. I'm the only living person besides Mary Beth. That's that right. Knows about this. That's right. How do you feel? I feel that I hope I can trust you. What do you mean? I mean, I, I, you may hate me. I don't know. But I, I, I feel you sorry for you. wouldn't do anything to, I mean, there's nothing you can do at this point. My father's cremated. He's cremated, so there's nothing to be done. But you can do something. You can get right with it. How, how can I get right with it? Go confess and go to jail? Do you think that's where I belong? Both of us? You and Mary Beth? I think she did it out of spite. I think maybe she does belong in jail. Come on, Anthony. Right, maybe not you, but admit that you think she did it out of spite, her part, holding well, his nose. I don't know. You got to remember, my sister was bankrupt at this point in time. Here we go. Tell me. She was bankrupt at this point. I, I do remember you telling me that story. Go ahead. And? Well, I don't know. I, I, she didn't say, yeah, let's do it so I can get his money. She never said that. But you know that was, if you had to guess, you're smart. If you had to guess, her going along with her part of the murder, would, he was going to be gone anyway. God, you make it sound. I've never, see, that's why, probably why I've never told anybody. Because they would shove it in your face that it's murder. Yeah. Yes, but it is. Say it. Say murder. No, I did not murder my father. Please. I feel I put him out of his misery. Did you stop his breathing and try to use halcyon? Yes, that's murder. Why can't you say the word? You're never going to heal if you don't. I'm not going to say it. No, I did not murder him. Why do you think euthanasia is the right word? Because I've seen it done so many times on people exactly like my father. You told me that the doctor said he could live for months. He could live. He said he could live for weeks or a couple months. 
But it, it, the mass is so big, he said, it, it is engulfing his whole lung that he has left. He has other lung, he only had a okay, quarter but lung So left. the doctor gave him weeks or months? Right. And no more than months. But and, it could be weeks, he said. He could die, he even said, he could die tonight, he could die tomorrow. Well, if he could die tonight day. or tomorrow, why wouldn't you let him do that? Why couldn't you just let it happen? Because there's only one person, one being that can determine the time of death, and that's God. Don't you believe that? You grew up Catholic. Don't you believe that? I believe it, but you, you have to see the flip side. If you work in medicine, some of the horror that I've seen and people that were euthanized over and over and over. You say that, but... I know it. I know medically what the dosage is, and I know what it's going to do to them. It's going to kill them. Did you think seven halcyon would kill them? No. Then why'd you give him seven halcyon? You thought that was the... F I said, I think that's probably maybe what he drank. No, what I'm trying to say is you told Mary Beth to make the drink and put the seven halcyon in. I told her to put more than that. It would take more than that. I thought you said yesterday six or seven. No. I said, he, that's probably only what he got because she made the drink oh, too big. Oh, she made the drink too big and he probably only got the dose of six or seven. Right. So, But it did knock him out. Within 30 minutes, he dropped his... How many halcyon did you want him to have? Well, to, he needed probably at least 15. 15? And did you instruct her as such? Did you say, put 15 in? Yeah, I said, you need at least 15 that... that will peacefully let him just go to sleep. That is how it was originally to be. He was just going to go to sleep with the halcyon. That was the original plan. Peacefully done. But she makes the damn drink this big and hands it to me. And at that point, he's grabbing it and drinking it. He took about six gulps of it. And with, within 20 minutes, it hit him. And I had to take the drink out of his hand, but he, it was a glass this big. And he maybe drank that What's that? that? Much. It's like a Tervis tumbler. Yeah, so he got this much of it. So he probably got about six, maybe not even six healthy on. But your plan... I one. wanted him to have all 15, lay on the couch, and just go to bed. And go, he would not wake up. He was on the couch? Yes. So your plan... Because he told us, I feel very sick. Okay. I feel sick. And I'm in a lot of pain, and it was set up just like this. He says, I'm going to lay on the couch. He says, Linda, I want you to sit here in the rocking chair. My chair is his orange chair. Of his. He said, I want you to stay here, and I want Mary to sit there. And I want you to stay until I fall asleep. This is before we did anything. Okay. And he laid on the, well, he sat first because he does his prayers at night. He did his prayer cards? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is, just cards with little just blurbs of prayers on them? I have them all. You have them? Mm hmm Jeez, what else did you save? Did you save the rag that you put in his mouth? No, I saved his wallet. He had $150 in it. I would have saved the rag, maybe, because that was the thing that ended his life. I mean, if you cared about... You didn't save that rag, did you? No. No, we didn't. We had to rem did you remove it before the paramedics came? Obviously. We, I rinsed it washed it. You rinsed it and washed it? I threw it away the next day. You threw it away, so it's gone. You could have had at least something that touched your father's mouth before he died. I had my lips that touched his mouth. As you tried to administer fake CPR that you knew wouldn't work. I kissed him before. You kissed him before you... I kissed him goodnight when he was on the couch. Before you gave him the halcyon? Yes. But you instructed Mary Beth how to make the halcyon... Because medically I knew what it would take his body weight what it would take by his body weight you said 15 and do you think she followed your orders and put 15 but yeah she, but she thought well if I do 15 I have to make this big glass full right you wanted 15 in a shot glass right wouldn't he have tasted it no not in vodka I don't think he would have tasted not it not in vodka no so if you had your druthers the way you instructed Mary Beth and she followed oh. your instructions but not to a T because she made the drink big, like the drinks that she drinks, gin and tonics, like vodka and soda. She made it big because she thought it's got to be a big drink because there's 15 pills going in it. 
But if you had your druthers, you'd have him have one or two shots in a small glass, like a Collins glass, like a small glass of um, the square little little right. round one. Right. Right. And then you would have put 15 in there and what, just stir them up in the vodka and they dissolve? Yeah, dissolve. And he'd take a swig of two of that. He'd drink the whole thing down. He'd, he'd drink, just it. drink it. And then what were you hoping? He would lay down and he would just go to bed. Can you say, can up. you say die? That's what you wanted. Yes, he would die. He would die. He would stop breathing. Which would mean he would die. Yes, he would die. So you would give him 15 Halcyon, he would die, and you would be happier for him because he'd be gone out of pain. Right. Right. But Mary Beth wanted the money. She was going bankrupt. Well, I can't say that. Yes, you can. We're not dumb. She's already burned through her money, hasn't she? Mm-hmm. How stupid is she? But she did want the money. She was going bankrupt. True? True? Yes. Yes, it is true. I lie to you, yes. You she won't lie to me. Bankrupt. She was bankrupt she wanted the money. That's her motive, and don't you think that's evil? Say it. Yes, I think it, it is. Yes. 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 You helped your sister commit an evil act. Because in her mind, it was evil. Because in her mind, she was getting money. She thought if dad goes into that facility where he's going to be in lockdown and so he doesn't wander on McMullen Booth Road, and, and he go, but it's, it's all nice for him during the day. They're taking care of him. That's not good enough for Mary Beth because that would soak up her inheritance. No, my father had nursing home insurance to pay for. Okay. So Mary Beth wasn't Talk worried. It was, Mary Beth wasn't worried it would soak up the... But you know medical bills would. Medical bills would cut into the, the inheritance. Well, he had Medicare, so there it, would be some. It would cut in. Would she was just in. ready to get her money. Be honest. Be honest. Tell the truth. I can't say that. I, she well, you just said it two seconds say, ago. She didn't tell me, let's do it because I want the inheritance. But you saw a smirk of on her face when you su- suggested, let's just... No, there was no smirk. We no? held hands and decided together that this was, we felt the best thing for him. But somebody had to say the words first. Somebody had to say, should we let dad go? And somebody else said, what do you mean let him go? And somebody said, you know what I mean. I can't remember. I'm not going to lie and say I said it first or she said it first because then I'd be lying. Well, this isn't a lie. You're the one who knew, just said you knew by medical knowledge that body weight and the seven, 15... Halcyon would do it. You instructed her to do that. Well, she didn't know what to do. How would she know? This was I think you're both culpable. I think you're both culpable because you instructed her how to do it. She mixed the drink. You helped him drink it. And when he didn't die, you said 30 minutes later, his eyes flung open and you started stuffing rags in his mouth. Well, he was delirious. He, he was not Because you awake. fucking drugged him. Yes, we drugged him. And he didn't get enough to... Okay, you want another scenario? Yes. Okay, let's go to my mother, 62 years old. Yes. She had a massive brain hemorrhage. Okay. Okay, she was brain dead. Mm-hmm. She had, in the hospital, mm-hmm. DNR. DNR. Not resuscitated. Right. Okay, that means you do not keep them alive with anything artificially to keep them, their heart beating, or keep them oxygen, anything. My mother chose that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we were all in the room, and um, the nurse and I were talking, and my mom had an IV line running into her. She was unresponsive, had the brain scan done, flat line, dead vegetable. Mm-hmm. Okay? The only thing keeping my mother alive was that IV. Right. Because it had a heart medication in it that was okay. making her heart beat. Yes. But she was dead. She was dead. And you removed and you removed the line? No, I did not remove it. But everybody left the room and because it, my mother was dying. Right. And I have a wimpy family, I guess. I was a strong one. You're the strong one? I worked in medicine. You worked in medicine. So when so they left the, the room... The nurse you... said, well, would you put, don't leave your mother, she said. Okay. Don't let your mother die alone. She okay. said, stay here with her. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she shut the door and she yeah. looked at me and she said, you know that this IV is against your mother's will, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. 
She says, give me permission to stop this IV. And I said, yes, you have my permission to stop it. And she did. And my mother died in 30 seconds. So who was this nurse? My mother, the nurse. What was I? What year, what year was this? Well, she was 62. It was, I was 40 years old. Or 37. My mom died. So, do you gonna blame me for that one too? You told her to, yeah, uh, kind of. How? Because well, my, cause she had a DNR, and my father didn't understand that DNR covered that IV. And the you, nurse you, said to me, "This, your mother does not want this. It's her wishes." But your it's in writing. Okay, but hold on a second. Now we're getting into another layer here. Your father is the first one to make that decision. If your father wanted that IV. And he wanted to keep your mother alive, the love of his life. Why couldn't he do that? He, whether he has a DNR or not, he still My has... mother had that choice. You have that choice. Okay, but listen. Still, the why does everything fall apart? Why, it, why does everything fall on Linda? Legally, it, it, why does everything fall on Linda Roberts to make the decision who dies? It so happened that I. It did fall on me. It wasn't. Was it, the nurse told me. Please give me permission to turn this ID off. Your mother... You didn't touch the pickcock? Turn never it Never touched it. I was holding her hand. She turned the ID off. I just don't see how you justify that one either. Who's next? What family member is next? Stop it. It's not funny. I mean, you know, who, what, you know hey, look, so-and-so's only got eight months to live. Let's stop them now. We can get their hair. My mother was dead. If you say so. The nurse said so. The doctor said so. She was brain dead. Okay. Your father wasn't dead, though. He was not. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He drank vodka. He had his... You know what's bothering me? It makes me just want to cry almost. You said he had his prayer cards in his hands, and they all started dropping out. Yes? Yes. As you, as you gave him his drink. He was praying... He may be, see, this is what bothers me. This, Linda, this is what really bothers me. This man was praying to God with his prayer cards. You gave him that halcyon, hoping it was a lethal dose. It wasn't, but it was enough to make that man drop his prayer cards and stop in the middle of his prayers. Maybe the last prayer he wanted to make, maybe he was trying to get right with something. You stopped him. As you said, the halcyon threw him for a loop. It just gave him enough to knock him into a loop. You don't get to do that. You don't get to say, I'm going to put you into a, lock you for a loop, Dad, while you're on your last prayer card. And then when you drop those prayer cards, I'm going to stuff a rag in your mouth. Well, he didn't. He slept for hours before we did that. You watched him hoping that that house down was enough. True? Right. True? It wasn't because my sister did not do it correctly. But is it true that you watched him for hours waiting for the hour of his death because you gave him what you thought might be? Yes well, or no? Yes. Yes. You were hoping he would be dead from the halcyon. You wouldn't have to choke him to death. Correct. Correct. It's too much. It's too much. Like, I, it was chilling to listen to. It's chilling right now. Because I think it's some murderer, some like big scary, you know, man with a you know a ugly face and a some weapon in his hand to, to bash your skull in and here you are this demure little nothing and you stop someone from living like and your own father that's called patricide but you make it sound like i didn't care i did care i know but you don't but you're very confused that's not that's not your it's not your right or your position to do that. What would you want me to do? What would I want you to do? Yes. I'd want you to follow the doctor's advice because that's what they're in place for. They said they were going to commit, start doing surgery, and your dad was okay no, with the surgery. No, they couldn't do surgery. They would, he would you have told no me, lungs. You told me he was going to get all cut up. No. I said he would. they would do chemotherapy on him. Okay. They would do probably radiation. But he, the doctor told me that night it engulfed his... Okay. Three quarters of his lung was full of. Okay. Again, cancer. you're in the medical profession, so you thought he the prognosis was very grim. Grim. It was terminal. Very gr terminal, even terminal. Okay. There's. It, what if we start? Just, let me ask you a question. Grim. You have a chance. 
Okay, let me ask you a question. There's, we go down here to this Mies countryside right next to your house down here. There's like 20 people on the edge of death and they have two months left, like your father. Two weeks, two years, 20 months, 20 weeks, 20 hours, 20 minutes. What if we just start pulling plugs on everybody? Just euthanize them, stuffing rags in their mouth, which is, by the way, is very personal. I can't believe you could do that. But what if we just went down to the hospital right now, just, you know, because we need rooms. We need room for healthier patients that aren't gonna die in two months, right? Another patient is more valuable if they're gonna die Maybe they got a year to live, so they need the room. Your dad, guys like your dad don't need the room, so you just start Excuse pulling plugs. What are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell I'm you. Am I a terrible person? No, I'm not trying to I tell you. I don't know what you want. I, don't, I, I told you, you asked me to tell you, and I told you. And you I, didn't I, expect it to be what I was No, to tell I didn't you. expect you. When you said you wanted to tell me what fucks you up and what makes you bad, I didn't think that it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be your father molested you girls. No, my father never did that. In fact, you thought he was the apple, he, were, he was... He still was the apple of my eye. Why would you kill him? I didn't kill him. I put him out of his misery. You had to see he was crazy. He was in pain. He didn't know why. He, he, didn't, he didn't even know he had a mass in his lungs. I never even told him that it was seven Linda, Linda, I think you can say this every single time we go around it, and you can say I did him a favor, but it's not... Not a favor? I did it out of mercy. Okay, it's not legal to do it in this world we live in. You don't get to determine with a rag. It's the same thing as me to me as the Hillside Strangler out in L.A. or whoever that guy was. I can't even remember his name, Richard Ramirez or something. So that is what you're comparing me to. Ted Bundy choked girls out here in Florida. They put him on death row. He, he, what if he determined, well, this girl's only 20. She's only got um, about 70 years to live. Um, that's, that's not really that long. I'm going to rape her, and then I'm going to choke her to death for my pleasure. Why is it different than that? Why is it different? He determined that this 22-year-old girl would be dead, or he had 17-year-old girls, 18-year-old girls. He was killing them all over the place. He determined he would use them. This was my father, and it was a... Mercy decision. I don't go around killing people. Come on. I don't know that. You had something to do with your mother? No, I didn't. The nurse turned it off. She you also said, just told me if Ted dies, you get the condo. Ted is going to way outlive me. I can tell you that. I'm on the cocaine binge that he's on. He's not on cocaine. Oh, this I told you I drug tested him 24 times. He's never come up positive for cocaine. Even though you know he's taken it. How could it not come up on the drug test? I randomly would do them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What I don't even care about him. I just I'm saying this whole thing is like I had trouble sleeping. I can't imagine you sleep. You say you sleep. I and didn't you... sleep. Why do you think I don't sleep? That's why you don't sleep at night. Probably, and in, a lot of it is inherited because my father didn't sleep. Are you still taking Ambien? Sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes, like I fell asleep in the chair. My one time you told me had to wake me up to put, tell me to go to bed. One time you told me you took Ambien and might have had a drink, and that really threw you for a loop. But you don't do that often. No. I've never seen you drink alcohol. I have a glass of wine at night before I go sometimes, to bed. Sometimes, but I've then never. I don't seen... take the Ambien because I don't need it. The wine. Okay, so if you if you don't if you don't take if you have a glass of wine at night, you don't take the Ambien. No, not you. But all those no. crazy texts you texted me were not because of Ambien. You're just crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, because at one point you Nobody's tried to blame Nobody's ever in their life told me that I'm crazy, even a psychiatrist. So you can an analyze me all you want, but I am not crazy. Hold on one second. I'm going to make a call. Hello? My friend was calling me. Hello? Hey, uh, did you just try to call me? Hey, I'm going to do that. I'm going to call them as soon as I get a chance right now, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know. How, how long? Okay, how long ago? 
Okay, yeah, I'm going to take care of that now. Thanks for letting me know about that, by the way. Everything going good? Everything good? All right. All right, great. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Um, all right. Um, as I was saying, uh, I. You know, we're not going to hurt my feelings if you tell me you don't want to see me ever it's again. It's not that. It's not that. That's not it. I, I'm not, and I'm not afraid of you. But in a way, I am. I mean, you're the kind of killer I see. And I, you know, I always watch those forensic shows. Yeah, and I think it's getting to your brain. What do you mean? Because I do not kill people. Yeah, but the, but the, but the, listen, I watch those forensic shows on TV. They solve these crimes about people that kill people for different reasons. And the people that do the murders always think they have a good reason. Like they needed money or they needed the house or they needed uh, some uh, piece of artwork or... But that's not why we did. Okay, well, Mary wanted the money. Be honest. True or not? That's not why I did it. But how about her? Did she want the money? I had plenty of money. But did she want the money? Yeah, I'm sure she Yeah, I'm sure she thought it would solve a lot of problems in her life, yes. There you go. And you you're part of how you helped her to do that? That's evil. You knew that she was you could have killed him by yourself. You could have put a rag in his mouth and pinched his nose. But you wanted your sister to be part of it too. And she had no problem wanting to be part of it. Perhaps she was the ringleader and she wanted you to be part of it. But either way, the only way you could stop his breathing is by stopping all the airways. You had to stop the nose and the mouth. And you let her hold the nose while you stuffed the rag in his mouth. So you both did it together because you wanted to be blood sisters in this murder. You didn't want to do it all yourself. You didn't want to do all the wet work. And she didn't want to. You didn't leave the room and say, Mary Beth, take care of him. The halcyon didn't work. You both said, okay, grab his nose. I'll, who said that? Did you say grab his nose, I'll push the rag in his mouth? Well, it was pretty obvious that, that what had to be done. No, it's not obvious to me. What? How did you determine it was obvious? You have to stop somebody's airway. So who said, let's do this together? I don't know. I, Four I, years I, ago. This was, but it was such an emotional <laughs> time when the halcyon did not work, and I knew it didn't work because he didn't get the correct dose. He, that was supposed to be a peaceful thing, let me tell you. You take calcium and you overdose on it, you just go to sleep. No pain, no nothing. That's what you planned. It was just going to be, go to sleep, Dad. Go to sleep, Dad. You're dying. You're, you're going to die. In, in two months. Of, no, it isn't two months. That's what you told me. He said days to months. Days to months. Okay. Days, hours, how about hours? He said your father could die tonight. Why couldn't you let him die? How do you think he felt when his eyes popped open and his daughters were looking at him and started stuffing rags in his mouth? He, he, he only opened his eyes momentarily and then... Oh, so now you're the arbiter of how alive somebody is. Because you're, you know, because you're in medical, so you know when someone's alive. What if he was fucking scared and he realized his daughters were outside of his person outside of his body stuffing rags in his mouth. Can you imagine his last thoughts? Imagine it. Then why was he at my bed telling me it was okay? Why was he at your bed telling you? Oh, in your dreams? Well, I think I know the reason he was at your bed. How do you know it wasn't him? In real life? Oh, an apparition, a ghost? Now we're talking about ghosts. Okay. So the ghost of your father came and told you it was okay that you murdered him. That's what you want to believe because that wraps it up in a nice little yeah, package. Yeah, I can't talk about this my sister gets home. You wouldn't dare do that. Talk about what? This whole yes, thing? Yes. No, she's, she's nuts. She's a nut. She's more to blame, I think, because she wanted the money. I really believe that. But you had the plan. She doesn't know about Halcyon. You you already admitted to me that you were like, I told her 15 Halcyon. You laid them out on the counter. 
Because I knew medically what it would take to overdose. I get it. Without your medical knowledge, her attempts would have been more, even more feeble. So you go. She probably would have given the whole bottle. Whole bo- Oh, she would have so done the whole bottle. Well, what was that? He what took about two a night anyway? But what about he took two a night? Yes, well, because the policeman sat there and countered every pill. But you definitely told her this will make him go to sleep forever. Yes. Yes, and she said, "Fine, I'll mix him up in a drink." So you knew the formula for a death cocktail, and she carried it out. But she did it wrong. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's what's scary. You both wanted him to stop breathing. Let's just, since you're more comfortable with the term euthanize or put him to sleep forever peacefully, let's just use those terms. You don't like when I say murder. That's okay. And you know, just so you know, I'm thinking that when I say euthanasia. Oh God, what? That's the correct term. It is Linda, Linda Roberts, or Linda Robert, whatever you call yourself now. You calling yourself Linda Robert? You you calling yourself Linda Roberts? Are you? Yes. Is that Ted's name, Roberts? Yes. Why'd you keep it if you're divorced? Because it was I did a name change before, and it makes a mess of your finances. Whatever. It's hard to to change it once so, I made a name. So, um... And it's an easy name to remember. So, when I told you just a little while ago, I said, what if I thought you were just telling me this to scare me? That's definitely not what you're doing. Do you want me to lie to you and say, yes, I told you that to scare you? (laughs) No, don't lie to me. You haven't been lying to me, I, I believe, but... No, I've not been lying to you. And you're not drunk or on Ambien right now? Oh, I'm drinking coffee, decaf. Why are you laughing? I mean, you've been known to I use don't it. take calcium. I take Ambien. Okay, but you're not on Ambien now. Why would I take Ambien in the middle of the day? I take a heart medication. And uh, I take okay, just forget else what you take. But you, you, do you feel like you're, like a, you're okay right now? Yes, I'm okay. Why? Do I seem not okay? You, how about yesterday? Were you on Ambien when you first told me this? What made you tell? I don't take Ambien a day. Were you on an alcohol? Were you on alcohol yesterday? I drink no alcohol. Okay. Ambien. Were you on anything when you told me yesterday about this? When you made the no. revelation? Huh? No, except my heart medicine and my thyroid. You felt okay. You felt healthy. Why would you say that? Because I don't know why you even started telling me. It's a huge re- revelation and. Because you asked me. Well, I asked you because you said you would, then you didn't want to say. You said you were going to tell me why you were so messed up, and you did, but I thought it was going to be molestation. I thought that's what the story was going to be. And then you, you said, there's no, nobody in the world knows about it, well, except Mary, because she helped me with it. And every time I said, you killed your father, you said, don't just say me, she did it too. You always want to make sure you said that every time I said it. Because it was a, a thing we agreed upon. A joint effort. Yes, it was the two of us. Her motives were wrong. Her motives were for money. I mean, she. I, I get it. Your dad was definitely going to die in two days, two weeks, two months. You both thought, let's help it along. You maybe you thought... Well, like, because he was in such misery, Anthony. I get it. I get it from your point. But from her point, she wanted the money. You already said that. And I believe it. Yes? Yes? I don't know. I'm just, can, the only thing I can tell you is she didn't say I want his money. But she was bankrupt, yes. And two seconds before, two, five minutes ago, you said, yeah, that's probably her motive. No, you said that. I said she was bankrupt. And I said the money was definitely a motivation, and you did say, trust me, you did say that a few minutes ago. You said, yes, probably. That's why I'm mad. Because one of you did it for altruistic reasons, and the other one, Mary Beth, she didn't care. She was pissed off at your dad. Well, you've just never seen her temper. I've seen her temper. 
Right. I can see it's inside of her. It's a bad temper. It's bad. But what you're saying right now is that... Ted it's, dropped his motorcycle and scratched it all up. His big bike. Yeah. Because he was coming to the house. This is when Shirley was still alive, I was telling you. We were outside and they... His niece had the nerve to tell me that my father had not had a bath in a year. And I said, give me a break. You not, you cannot tell me my father has not had a bath in a year. Well, I said that, and my sister, I could see her face get red, and she started screaming at the niece of Shirley. We were outside at this time. And Ted was coming around the corner on his bicycle, on his motorcycle, and he heard my sister from one street down. And he got so upset, he literally got off his bike and it just fell over. Wow. So, but you keep mentioning about, you don't understand Mary Beth's anger issues and mean streak. Because every time we talk about the murder of your father, you bring that in. So I know, this is why I know that you think her anger towards him had to do with her decision to go along with the quote-unquote plan. I mean, you keep saying that. You keep saying, you don't know about my sister's anger, but yet you want to protect her, so you say, oh, I don't know if she did it for anger or money. But you keep saying you don't know about her anger streak. So does it, is it germane? Is her anger issue germane to the killing of, of, um, of uh, your... Who's trying to call me here? Who's trying to call me? Okay. Is it, is it, is that, um, is her anger germane to the killing of your father? I think it is, just from what you told me. It could be, yes. It could be, yes. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm pissed off. You let her kill your father. You let your sister kill your father. But I, I was involved in it. Involved? You were the ringleader. Well, I don't know who was the ringleader. I mean, you knew how many Halcyon he needed, and it didn't work because she, she fucked that up. This is an incredible story. I don't even know what Halcyon is, but it sounds, it sounds terrible. It's a sleeping pill. It's just a, a strong one. Yeah. For people that have insomnia. Don't ever care. offer me any uh, like uh, pills like, uh, here, take this for your headache, Anthony. On. Do you think I would do that? I, I, well, I, never, I don't know what you would never do. do that. How do, how do I, I treat patients every day in the office and gave them medication. And then you euthanize some. You, you euthanize some other ones. You said you said I've done it. I've. They always but euthanize. That was for doctor's orders, I was following orders on how to titrate the medication. Up. I didn't make the decision what the doses was. The doctor did. So you followed the exact measurements. Of course. I All, right. Did. All right, well, maybe that's a little bit better then. But you pushed you pushed enough medication that you but you knew the patient was going to die. Yes, I did. Yeah. And I knew Shirley was going to die that night, too. Sure, when you did. I didn't do it, but she did it. When you disconnect she, her IV, sure. No, that was my mother. Shirley was... Oh, wait, now Shirley died, too? Shirley, my mother died when I was young, 37. My father asked me to find him a woman. I had a thousand patients that I knew. Right. And I had one in mind that I thought would be, she was a wonderful woman. Aren't you the matchmaker? So I matched me, and okay. they were together 20 years. All right, so when, but now, they never married. Right, but how did Shirley die? Shirley died of, she had, she had a triple bypass. At okay. the age of 32 years old. But I got a feeling something else was coming. What no. happened? What happened with her? She was in, in the nursing home. And they administered a lethal dose of morphine. Hospice did, yes. Not me. Because that's what they do. Yes. My cousin's mother just died. They gave her the bottle of morphine. And they said, when your mother cannot stand the pain anymore, they showed her on the syringe. Who showed her? The nurses. This is where you fill it up to. And you give her the, you give her the morphine. Wait, who did they tell this to? My cousin. And they gave it to her and she died. So your cousin euthanized? Her own mother. What the fuck is going on with your family? No, this is how this was. No, wait, hold on a sec. What's your cousin's name? Connie. Connie what? Well, she just got married to 
from an Italian guy, so then I came to say... What was her old name? Sartori. Sartori? Yeah. Where do they live? Here, in Trinity. In Trinity? And so her mother, Connie Sartori's... She's 95 years old. Okay, but still, hospice left a bottle of morphine and said, Absolutely. when your mom can't stand With the pain, the syringe. fill it up to here. So yep. Connie administered that? Yeah. And she's not in trouble for doing that? No. Why? Because it was doctor's orders. Oh, really? I don't, I don't believe, I don't buy any of this crap. I don't want it. I, 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 me personally, I want to fight till the end. If you are in so much pain yeah? that you can't literally stand it, you would beg for that last dose. Oh, please. I love how Guarantee people adjust. Guarantee Anthony you would. And I know I'm going to go sit and call Ted Anthony. Ted? Yeah. I'm going to call him your name. I know I am. Oh, that's whatever. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm just... I don't know what to tell you either. I, I told you and, and I can't take it back now. No, you told me of your own free will. It happened. And what you think of me, I can't help now. But I don't murder people. I would never kill you anybody. Don't, you don't murder people, but but that's plural. You, do you murder a person? Did you murder a person? Well, by your standards, I did. How about society standards? Does that matter to you? The mores of society dictate that we don't determine the last breath that a person takes, we don't do it. Obviously, you're very upset with me about this. I'm upset about hearing the whole thing. I never thought I'd hear this. I always thought, with, because I've hung around all kinds of people, and I always thought maybe, hey, I wonder if this guy or this friend of mine ever killed somebody. He seems like, Well, he seems like somebody who could kill somebody. But nobody's ever come out and told me, hey, Anthony, I want to tell you about a murder. I've never heard that. This is the first time in my life, at 53 years old, that somebody told me that they were responsible for someone not breathing anymore. Don't you understand it's the same to me? It's the same as someone who, uh, who, who, who shot somebody in the head with, a, uh, with your 38. It's the same. You think the method of putting a rag down your dad's throat and pinching his nose and trying to give him lethal doses of halcyon, you, think, you really think that's different than a gun. I know you do. The gun makes a mess and you'd be arrested immediately. That's why you didn't do that. If you knew putting him out of his misery quickly could be done with a gun, a small caliber weapon that would, that you could make look like a, he did it, you'd probably do that. No, it never came to my mind to use a gun. But I'm just saying, there, to me, there's no difference. Just because I have a permit, you think you feel that way. I wish you didn't have a permit. I think you're dangerous. I do. I wish the doctor would take your gun permit if he's going to take your license to drive. Well, you're probably right. I shouldn't probably have a gun no. if I can't see. You got that right. Who are you going to shoot? The mailman? <laughs> it's not funny. Why shoot the fucking mailman? I think it's an intruder. Okay, you want me to give my permit? I wish you would. I wish you would sell that gun and give your permit up. I don't think you need it. The person you claimed you wanted to protect yourself from when you bought the 38 was Ted. Now he's moving from North Carolina into a condominium with you around the corner. I don't think you need... Now we have to learn about the thing. What? Now we have to do this. Well, I don't think you need the 38 anymore. You told me you wanted to get a 38 because Ted was crazy. He would stalk you. He's choked you in the past and hurt you. And you needed protection from him. And you kept the gun out on your nightstand or was out on the fucking kitchen counter when I came in one time. You said you needed a 38 because Ted could come in any minute. Now Ted's moving in with you. So I don't think you need the 38 anymore. Why don't you? I'll call my friend that's a gun dealer, and he'll give you a fair price for the for the gun. And you can sell it to him. You don't need it. Please. Please. Well, I don't have control of it. I won't have control of it anymore anyway. What do you mean? When they move into the condo. What? Put in the lockbox and just... Can you just sell it to my friend? He's a dealer. It's like a four or $500 gun. He'll probably give you 300 bucks for it so he can make 100 when he sells it. Can you just do that, please? You don't but then need Ted it. has his gun. Okay. We, I can't make him sell his gun. Okay. Well, if you would have stuck to one of your restraining orders against him, he would have lost his gun. Can you, um, can you let my friend buy that? 
I'm not going to ski right now. No, I can't say that. Give up your gun permit. You don't want to listen to me about anything. How do you give up a gun permit? Who do you give it to? Take it to the sheriff's and just turn it in and tell them you don't think you need to have a gun anymore. They'll, they'll make sure your gun permit to, is... Do you have a carry permit? Yeah. You don't need that shit. You're not... You're really not okay, Linda. You don't know. I was up at Sally's Beauty Supply and I had to park far away from the place. I was in the corner, right? Yes. And a man drives... I was, did not have my permit at the time. I got out of the car, wasn't loudly gagging around, finding my keys, da da da. This man drives up in a Mercedes, right, opens his window to me and says, Would you like to go have a cup of coffee right here at the Starbucks with me? And you wanted to shoot him, but you didn't have your gun permit. No, Shucks. All we had to do, 108 pounds, was take my arm and grab it and pull me and put him in his car and go kill me. I had no defense. And you were scared of this man in a Mercedes Benz? Yes, I was scared of him. Man in a Mercedes Benz asked you to have coffee at Starbucks. Yes. So if you had your gun, you would have been safer. If he would have tried to grab my arm or something, I got lucky I hadn't locked my door yet or shut it. My door was still open. I got in my car, pressed the lock button, and drove away. Well, I'm just in interested. You that don't think that, that men pick up women and kill them? They do, but I haven't heard of it recently. I, heard, I hear more about people shooting family members with a gun than anything. Who, who's I there? Bang. I never wanted to shoot a family member in my life. Never. If even Ted, my sister. If Ted was, even your sister. Because yeah, you get so much screaming and yelling as she's done at me. But why would you even say that? That's an option to kill someone that screams and yells at you. No, that's what I said. I never wanted to kill anybody. Except your dad. Oh. Is there ever going to... You're never going to... Probably it. after today, I will never talk about it again. Probably. But I, I can't... I couldn't sleep with it yesterday. I'm sorry. It was your anniversary. It, that doesn't matter. It's patricide. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have my dad or my mom right now, and I think about that, and I can't believe you did it. I'm sorry about him possibly suffering... There's a lot of people that go out of this world in pain. And there's some people that leave peacefully in a hospital bed with nothing but a blanket and memories. But you don't get to take those memories away at the time that you... I want my friends calling. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I don't know, though, um, because uh, I was thinking about the other one. Uh, I, I might have a few minutes. Just let, let me just check it. Okay, hold on. Just hang, out, hang loose for me on one second on the phone. Hold on a second. I might have to go meet my friend in a second. Um, what time does Mary Beth get back? Any minute. Any minute? Six. Okay. Oh, the, uh, okay. The only thing I just wanted to reiterate, the only thing I was thinking of is, um, you know, just trying to uh, work out that other thing. You think that you think that'll work itself out? I can do that. I can do that, yeah. I can meet you anytime. Yeah. Okay, yeah. People are so demanding. No cakey sandwiches on the time go. Oh well. No sex, I guess you know, just we gotta just be, you know, it just gotta be our hold on one second. It's gotta be friendly with each other. Um, that's what I'm hoping. Hoping to be. I want to be friends. I'm not going to be your friend, Anthony. You're not going to be my friend. Why? 
I don't want to. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But um, if I need to talk about this again because it's upsetting me, you're the only person I can talk to. Obviously, you know that. Because it was hard to sleep last night. You'll get over it. I'll get over it? Oh, because you did? I'm not over it, but I, you will learn, it, just like when your mother died, it got easier and easier every day. You, you are going to just forget about all of us. I promise you. If you say so. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. You will get, you'll forget everything. Did you forget everything? No, I'll never forget it. I'll never... F- you know, Take yourself to go. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. But, you know, I just feel saddled with this now. Feel sad? What? You don't have to. All I do. Well, I don't know that I believe you anyway, so... You don't think that I'm upset about hearing this? You don't think so? I've never heard anything like this in my life. And again, the things that bother me the most are you gave him this dose and he starts dropping his prayer cards. That really, that bothered me. He was in the middle of praying and he couldn't do it anymore because of the dose you gave him. Even the half dose because she mixed the drink too much, but still, that is upsetting. I'm going to get going. Um, I guess we could talk later or whatever. Why? Uh, I don't know. You're definitely upset. I don't want to talk later. You don't want to talk later? No. What are you saying? You don't ever want to talk again? Because you're upset? You're upset at me? No, I'm not upset at you. Are you upset at yourself? I wish you would just go and take your sandwich and go. I wish you would... If you come to terms with what you did, then you would heal. Stop you saying euthanasia. And say murder one time into the mirror and then try ask God for forgiveness, I guess. Go meet your friend. You can share a sandwich with us. Her. I'm going to get going. Okay, you got a bag? Um, this shit about your um, your daughter Annie what's her ex-husband's name again um, or the father of Aiden Glenn what, Glenn? Glenn what Bell. Glenn Bell he's got connections and what if he has Ted killed then I'll be a widow or I'll, I'll be an ex-wife widow so is Annie's last name Bell? It's Alexander. She's married to Richard Alexander. Wait, Sorry. your daughter Anne is married to Richard Alexander, but she was had a kid with Glenn Bell? Yes. And Glenn Bell is the one that we're afraid of that will kill people? Well, he has friends, I guess it does. He has friends that will kill people? I hope he doesn't kill your new your your situation with Ted coming down here. No, it's not either. On okay. The back. Um, no. Thank you for that. Okay. I'm going to get going. 
See you later, Linda. What's that? I don't think so. Uh, well, hello. Huh? Goodbye. 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're sorry, what? I upset you. You what? I upset you. Okay. Do you think I'm a terrible person? I'm sorry. I didn't, I don't think that you're bad. I just think that you are really confused. I told you that. I think you've been confused for a long time in your life. I think the confusion probably started before four years ago, but I also think that the confusion continues and I think you need help. I think you got messed up before you killed your father four years ago, but I think that that's why whatever is wrong with you, I don't know what's wrong with you. You Maybe, don't know my life, but you can't say that. I don't know your life, but I know you killed your father. And I know that that's probably messing you up right now. I don't think you're okay. I mean, you seem okay. But you definitely have issues. And perhaps after you did something, I don't know, maybe after you do something like this, it changes the person you are. Do you think you were okay before you killed your father? Nobody ever told me I wasn't. Nobody ever told you you weren't what? Okay. Okay. You think you're mentally okay? Yes. Even to this day? Yes. Okay, whatever. i got to get going. All right, goodbye. All right, talk to you later. Okay. All right, I'm out of there. I'm going to disconnect this. And I'll call you on the regular phone. Thank you all for watching, everybody. And until next time, take care.